Hello and welcome to another of our short talks on prayer. My name is Jeannie and I'm one of the ministers at Carshalton Beaches Baptist Church. It's good to have you with us. Let me begin with some honest sharing. I wasn't brought up as a Christian and so I never really gave prayer much thought, although I think I did send the odd heartfelt help in God's general direction. When I became a Christian, which surprised everybody around me, probably me most of all, I was taught about prayer. I was told that I needed to sit down, preferably in the morning, and for about 15 minutes talk to God, and I was given various suggestions on the kind of things I should talk to him about. I tried. I really did try. But I just could not make it work, whatever I did. And so for me in those early years, prayer came to be associated with an awful lot of guilt. I felt like I didn't pray hard enough. I didn't pray long enough. It just, just didn't work. And so in the end, I actually wanted to give praying up altogether. Perhaps you felt like that sometimes. Perhaps you even feel like it now. It's sad that something which is meant to be about friendship with our amazing God just becomes something of a burden or a chore that we just end up feeling bad about. Then one day I went on a day conference on personality and prayer. The trainer there spoke about somebody who sounded a lot like me. And then she spoke about the kind of prayer that I'd been trying to do. And she said that that kind of personality would find that kind of praying really difficult and might need to find some other ways to pray and she suggested some of them. The relief for me was absolutely enormous. My desire to pray was rekindled. And since I've learnt lots of different ways of praying and tried them and some have worked better than others, believe you me, I am no expert in prayer. Before I continue, a few gentle words of warning. The first is to say that sometimes prayer, like any other relationship, needs work. Sometimes we need to keep at it during the tough times. The second thing to say is that learning about personality types does not make you any less you. You are unique, a particular combination of genetics and history and, yes, personality. So you're still you. You're a one-off. God didn't make anyone else the same as you. And the third thing to say is that circumstances will make a difference. Even if you might be normally the kind of person for whom a structured prayer time at the same time of day would work really well, if you happen to be the parent of a small child who's up and running and bouncing around from 5am, you might need to find a different way to pray. Our praying lives change over time and then with our circumstances. This is a huge topic, but I hope at the end of this talk, perhaps a couple of things might have happened. The first is I hope that it might help you to celebrate who you are, that you are you, to enjoy what makes you, you. The second thing I hope is that it might help you to appreciate other people. They may be made very differently from you. That's part of the joy of being in friendship with one another. You are wonderfully made, as Psalm 139 puts it, and so are they. There is no blueprint for prayer. Just as there are all kinds of ways of doing friendship with other people, so there are all kinds of ways of doing friendship with God, depending on how we're made. Let me ask you a question. If you're really tired, what energises you? What would you want to do to kind of feel energetic again? Would that be a party mixing with lots of other people? That would suggest that you might be an extrovert. Or would you actually need to spend some time alone or perhaps with one other person? That might suggest that you're an introvert. There are often terms that are misunderstood, people thinking that introverts don't like people, but that's not true at all. I'm very introverted, but I also really love people. But at the end of a Sunday, when we are able to meet together, as we can't at the moment, I do need to spend time alone to kind of regroup. There's no better way. Jesus was clearly both of those things. 
At times he went to parties and obviously really enjoyed them, but at other times he clearly needed to spend time alone. Both are fine, we're just made differently in that way. Extroverts often pray better while doing something else. They might pray better while going for a walk or perhaps sort of going over the day with God at the end of the day or driving or something which involves some sort of physical activity. Introverts, in contrast, on the whole prefer to pray quietly alone. Both of them can pray in a group, but introverts may find it more of a struggle to do that. Another difference is between those who experience the world through what their five senses tell them and those who experience the world kind of differently, a little bit more internally. The first group are often very observant. They're practical realists who notice the things around them. There are aspects of this in Mark's Gospel, some lovely moments where there's kind of real eyewitness details like the green grass at the feeding of the 5,000. Green grass was unusual in Israel. People like this are often, often like procedures and instructions, specific things. And this is part of God's nature. We see it in the Old Testament where there are various guidelines laid down for God's people and the way that they should live. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 14, where he's talking about public worship, says, God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. People who experience life through their five senses may be drawn to prayer through beautiful sights, although they're not alone in this. I think probably most of us are. Sometimes people like that might find it helpful to use bodily positions in prayer, maybe kneeling or standing with arms outstretched, a way in which they can kind of experience their prayer as they do it. The challenge can be for people like this, for prayer not to become too stuck and rigid, so it turns almost into a sort of ritual. In contrast, as I said, some people experience the world more internally through their imagination, through images and metaphors. We see this in Jesus' thinking, where he uses all kinds of parables and pictures to explain deep truths about God. People who experience the world in this way prefer spontaneity and might struggle with a very fixed routine, unlike the first group. Prayer for them can be a little bit more like a butterfly kind of flitting from place to place. Often so much is going on inside that it can be difficult to settle to prayer. And it can be hard to understand other people who are much more kind of fixed in the way that they pray. A third way that we differ from one another is the extent to which we are impacted by our minds or our hearts. Now it's really important to say that that doesn't mean that if we kind of process the world through our minds that we don't have a heart and it doesn't mean that if we process the world through our hearts that we don't have a mind. We have both but it just is about kind of how we make sense of the things around us. People for whom their mind is more crucial can set very high standards for themselves and for others. Sometimes they'll point out the flaw in a plan, not necessarily realising that that might be hurtful to someone else. It's just that that's, they can see it. Matthew's Gospel reflects this orderly, systematic way of looking at the world in the way that he sets out the Gospel. And Jesus uses that kind of thinking in his teaching too, particularly, for example, in the Sermon on the Mount. People who experience uh, life in this way may experience God in prayer through their minds rather than through emotions. And it's really important that they don't feel lesser because they don't have an emotional experience of God in prayer, but also important that they don't look down on other people who might do so. A final way that people experience life is through the heart then. For people like this, the experience of God is more important than kind of knowledge about him. They feel things very deeply. Relationships for this group of people are paramount. Relationships with the people that they work with can be more important than anything that they achieve. 
If there's tension at work, they may be unable to do their normal job routine until that tension is resolved. They enjoy peace and harmony. Luke's Gospel reflects this way of looking at the world. Jesus had this strong feeling um, side to him. He felt things deeply. He was moved with compassion. Sometimes he was enraged. So clearly he had this very heartfelt side to his nature. People who experience life in this way can find it hard to believe that their prayer is valid if they don't feel anything. Their prayer will be very people focused and they'll often be drawn to prayer for others. Though of course that's something that we should all seek to do. Their feelings will be aroused by whatever's happened in the day and those things will draw them to prayer. Most of us build lifestyles around the personalities that we have. For some of us, our lifestyles will be very planned and very structured. Most Bible and prayer plans tend to be written by people who live and function in that kind of way. Others develop a more kind of spontaneous go with the flow attitude to life. And they might, may find that more structured Bible study and prayer more difficult and challenging. Whatever our personalities are like, we can also be impacted by the images of God that we carry, often without even knowing that we do so. Some of us carry an uh, image of God inside as a kind of stern traffic controller who is waiting to catch us out when we park in the wrong place. Or we may experience God as a kind of, like a pharaoh, a, a slave driver who simply wants us to work harder and harder. We may experience God as a headmaster who always says that we could do better. Or sometimes as a benign, kind of rather docile, grandfatherly figure, but who doesn't really have any power. So our prayers aren't really going to change anything. We're hugely impacted by those people who cared for us in our early years. And sometimes we need to undo our images of God to help us in our prayer life. That's probably their one for another day. So where does this leave us? A few final thoughts. Firstly, I think it's very important to learn to value the way that God made us. Psalm 139 says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. God made you, you. And although, as I said, we cer share certain qualities with others, our individual prayer relationship with God is just special to us and to him. God understands us and the challenges that we face. Secondly, it is really important to accept and value one another. Paul writes these words in Romans 15 verse 7. Accept one another, just as Christ accepted us, in order to bring praise to God. He writes elsewhere in 1 Corinthians 12 that we're like a body, all different parts, but together, really importantly, Christ's body. And so we may be different from other people around us. We may pray differently in a prayer meeting, for example, but that's part of how God made us. And it's so important that we work together and value one another. Thirdly, however we pray, the role of the Holy Spirit is crucial. Prayer is God's idea and he draws us to it. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit as our helper and certainly I know that I need that enormously. At times, whatever our particular prayer style, as Paul puts it in Romans 8, God's Spirit is right alongside us, helping us along if we don't know how or what to pray. It doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. All of us have all of these different personality traits, but to different degrees. The only person who is perfectly balanced in every way was Jesus. 
So all of us at times can benefit from praying in a different way. And it's good sometimes to try something that might not come so naturally to us. But there will be some ways that work better for you, an easier fit for the person that God has made you to be. So let's all this week try to pray as we can, not pray as we can't, but above all to pray. It's not a chore, but a response to God's amazing love for us and one of the ways in which we have friendship with him. The best friendship of all. God bless you.